everybody. Welcome to the Hallmark Keys podcast. And I'm so excited today. We are here to live vicariously through another person. The ultimate Hallmark party happened this last weekend with the June weddings uh, gala event. I don't know what you call it exactly. It's basically Comic-Con for Hallmark fans. And we all wanted to go, but we couldn't go. And so I reached out to a fellow super fan that was going and her name is Aunt Scott. And she was so nice to tweet out and uh, and uh, Instagram post uh, her experience. And she agreed to come on the podcast and to talk about what it was all like. So this is very exciting. So Anne, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Oh yeah, I'm glad to be here. So Anne, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got uh, started watching Hallmark movies? Um, well, I'm Anne and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. And um, I actually started watching Hallmark movies because my husband uh, works at the airport. So he works crazy hours. And so in 2016, he worked this crazy shift and I wouldn't see him for like four days at a time. And so I was like trying to, you know, find stuff to do, find stuff to watch. And so that kind of stumbled me into Hallmark Channel and Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. And so ever since that season of my life in 2016, I've been totally watching Hallmark and Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. So yeah. That's awesome. Do you like both the shows and the movies or just more the movies? Um, I actually watched two of the shows. I watched Good Witch and Chesapeake Shores. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the movies for both channels. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. So are you excited about the upcoming Good Witch? coming back yeah I am. i'm really excited especially with the wedding and everything yeah i'm excited yeah it's my favorite of the shows as well so i'm very excited and we're going to get to talk to have our fourth podcast with Catherine disher uh if all goes as planned <laughs> Uh, and because we love her she's amazing and she's been such a great friend of the podcast and i just love mayor martha so much yes she's so great i really love her character yeah and i i was a little disappointed that she seemed to reconcile so quickly with <laughs> with, with, with I, I think it would have been hilarious if there'd been like a whole season with mayor martha at blairsville that would have yeah. been the best <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and I love Catherine Bell. I've liked her ever since Jag. She's great. She's just so, she's just, she manages to pull off this kind of calming persona without making it seem cloying, at least to me. And uh, she, yeah, she does a really good job. And then, and then she's had such good chemistry with both of her lead co-stars. But, uh, you know, I love <laughs> the, the, you know, her and Cassie and Sam are the best. Yeah, they're really good. I, I just love the whole dynamic of that show, and it's kind of different, and just this fun show. Yeah, it's a really, really good. So I'm excited about this next season. And so what are some of your favorite uh, Hallmark, both Christmas and non-Christmas? Do you have some favorites that you really love? Yes. Well, it's going to become obvious my answer is that Andrew Walker is my favorite um, Hallmark leading guy. Uh-huh. I really love A Bride for Christmas, um, and I really, lo I really did love Wedding at Graceland, I mean, uh, Christmas to Graceland, uh, that was really good. Were you a big fan of Bottled with Love I with Andrew Walker? I yeah. love Bottled with Love, because I love Bethany Joy Lenz, I watched One Tree Hill when I was in high school, um, so I was so happy they were working together again after Snowden, and so I, I really liked it a lot. Yeah. It was good. It was a little weird for me how much Hallmark loved it. Like, it was just yeah. so odd. Because <laughs> I'm like, Andrew, but I was like, wow, they're like really promoting this. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is the best movie you'll see all year. I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Critics are raving. Like, what? <laughs> that was really different. Everybody I saw was like, what's the deal with like all this stuff and promos yeah. and quoting <laughs> people and stuff? <laughs> Yeah. So was Christmas at Graceland your favorite from this last holidays? Um, it was. It was my favorite from the last. Mm, yeah. I enjoyed it because just because Wes Brown, I think, is so swoon-worthy. He is very swoon-worthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite queen that you look forward to? The Queen of Hallmarks, we call them, our leading ladies. I mean, I have a couple. Um, I really like Lacey Chabert, and I really I like Danica McKellar a lot. <laughs> I like Jen Lilly a lot. Um, those are like the ones I, I guess, the the most movies, I guess, that I, that I like. 
Yeah, those are those are really good picks. They they're really good. I Lacey went through a bit of a dry patch for me where I wasn't really loving her movies. I I thought the 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 Africa one was fine. Um but last year I did not like her Valentine's movie. And I don't know, there's just a bunch of that I just wasn't a big a fan of, but I did like her Valentine's movie this year. Yes. I thought. I like that one. I like that one a lot. I wasn't that big of a fan. Actually I love on Safari. I don't know what it was for me about it there's something about it i don't know yeah the station was too high i'm not really sure what happened but i was kind of like let down a little bit yeah, I really liked yeah. It. I, I mean it wasn't the best but i liked it better than her valentine's one which i really just was not a big fan of anyway so that was fun i mean all there was just all that sexy chocolate tempering that was like that's like the new thing i think now <laughs> but chocolate though when it was i know (laughs) but none of that modern chocolate with the kiwis and madness it was so funny to me because she's like all judgy about the modern chocolate but yet her flavor combinations were so terrible sounding i was like what is she putting in there (laughs) it did sound weird when they when they said what yeah (laughs) so that's really fun so how did you hear it? You just heard about it on Hallmark about this event, the Scala event or whatever. I think that the first time I saw it, it was on Instagram. I saw it on their Instagram saying, Hey, we're having the, you know, June wedding and fest, uh, Graceland. So I became interested from that moment uh, that I saw it since I'm in Tennessee and it's not very far from where I am. So you guys, you and your mom went? Yes. Uh huh. So that must've been fun little road trip. That was really fun. Uh, my mom is a huge Kelly Pickler fan. She loved Kelly since she was on American Idol. And bought all our CDs and just followed her on her on her on her reality show and all this stuff. So she, was <laughs> like, oh Kelly's gonna be there. You know, I wanna go, I wanna go and um, and she watched General Hospital with Jack Wagner. So he was totally into all this. You know, this stuff. <laughs> That was a good pull for her. And she likes Hallmark, too, not as much as me. But she's, she watches the movies, too. So, yeah, it was really fun to go with her. That would be really fun. <laughs> I didn't even know that Kelly Bickler had a reality show, so. Exactly, right? Nobody else knows. <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny. Uh, well, that's cool. So, yeah, the whole thing, it took place in Memphis. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, this is going to sound super ignorant, but, like, is Memphis is Graceland like is that part of Memphis or is it close or yes it's in Graceland yes. it's in Memphis Memphis um they have like the Elvis Presley Memphis like compound with a bunch of stuff like that's where the panels were and then across the mm-hmm. street is where the mansion is and the next to that is the guest house at Graceland Hotel so it's all okay. right there so did you get to go to Graceland when you were there to yeah. the house I went, yeah, we went toward the mansion on Sunday, and it was amazing. I learned so much about Elvis that I didn't know, and seeing all the retro, like, designs and, you know, old phones and TVs and all the decor, it was, it was really cool. Huh, that's really cool. That would be fun. And, yeah, were you, were you a big, big uh, Elvis fan? You like Not really. Actually, I don't really know that many of his songs, and, you mm-hmm. know, all of these, you know, really hot, and he has some, you know, cool songs. But I didn't really know that much about him. And his dance moves, I knew that. But uh, I really learned a lot. They kind of you do like a headphone tour, so um, you have a headphone and an iPad, and you it tell it knows like where you are. So it says this is the dining room, and then it tells you all about it, and then you just keep going. And so it was, it was a very informative tour, and you get to go throughout his pretty much his whole house. They have like a whole awards and everything hall and um, his horses and. Okay. So, did you stay at the guest house hotel? We did not stay at the guest house hotel, but if they do this again, everyone should stay at the guest house hotel, including me, because everyone who stayed there apparently saw everybody there, the stars. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw so and so when I checked in, or I came down for breakfast and there was so and so. And I was like, oh man, I missed out not being at the hotel. Like, <laughs> the hotel is a good thing. <laughs> Have you ever have you ever done anything like this before? Like gone to a con or a or a fan meet and greet that kind of thing? I only did um, 
it's like a really small like superhero fan um one of the fan fest superhero not like comic-con but I, i've tried to go to comic-con i never get in somehow so um <laughs> they had a, um like one of the fa- smaller fan fests at the nashville music auditorium and um we went to that my husband and i because we love superhero stuff and um all the shows and stuff so yeah but this is uh, only my second experience so that's really cool. I I've been to D23, which is the big Disney Ooh. Comic-Con, so that's pretty fun. I went one time before and then the next one's coming up in August and they only have it every other year because I think they need you to kind of build up your stamina because it's really exhausting. It's fun, but it's exhausting. You have to wait in line for literally everything and use the bathroom. Like you have to wait for everything and uh, it's it it's, can be kind of stressful, but it's also really cool. I don't know. <laughs> the good with the bad, but I'm excited. That's really fun. So yeah. So and I I've been to the local uh, Comic Con. They call it Fanex here in Salt Lake, and that's pretty fun too. So, but um. So yeah, they. So I guess they started with you arrived there, and did they have anything? Uh, for you when you first arrived? It looked like they had some photo ops and some other stuff like that. They had, um, you went and picked up your packet and then um, in your packet you had, um, like you had to have a bracelet to get into the event. So whatever package you had, you had that. And then um, I think that that was really it. Once we got Mm -hmm. there, we did exchange our, because with the package came the like tour for the mansion. So we went ahead and exchanged our tickets then. Um, but then that was really it. Cause we, we can, went on Friday to try to beat the rush, even though there wasn't a rush to beat, but, um, we thought there might be. So mm-hmm. all our stuff since Saturday morning, we could just head straight to the, um, the first event. Yeah. What was the attendance like? Wasn't, cause we just haven't, there wasn't much buzz. There was hardly anyone talking about it on Twitter. It seemed like, and I so I kind of wondered. I, I mean, it was not what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be like a whole lot of people. Um, yeah. And so I, at the party, there was a lot more people than at the panels that I was at. It seemed like, I don't know, it's always, it seemed at that time there was a lot more people in the room um, when it was the party than when I was at the panels. But I mean, there was, you know, a good amount of people, but not as many people as you would expect. Yeah. I think, I don't know why they didn't do it in New York or LA or even Vancouver. It, seemed, it would seem to make way more sense to me yeah. than, uh, I mean, I guess they were just really trying to plug the uh, wedding at Graceland I guess. whole thing. But I think that would have made more sense to have it be at like a hub kind yeah. of place. And to give people more notice, because I mean, the first time I saw it, I mean, I don't remember now, but I feel like it was like, yeah. Which maybe, you know, people right. notice to like, be like, you know, they can be planning and saving money and, you know, yeah. I feel like more notice would have been better also. Um, yeah, that's true. Even for us, because like maybe if we'd had some time to kind of save a little bit or, or, uh, you know, cause that's a, it's a lot when you have to fly out and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a lot. So yeah, that's interesting. I kind of wondered. And so the first panel that you went to, they had wedding at Graceland panel. So who was all on this panel? It was Kelly West, uh, Claire, who plays her daughter. Oh gosh, I'm gonna mess up. Uh, Tamara and Ryan, who's like her best friend, and then her love interest, and then her boss, the older gentleman. I don't know his name. Um, and so it was all of them. And then there was. Uh-huh. So what uh, little nuggets did they give you about what we have to expect with wedding in the wedding at Graceland? Uh, they showed us um, two sneak peeks. One of them was really good, like really juicy one. <laughs> and then they did, um, they showed us like behind the scenes with uh, Kelly and uh, Lee Bryce, uh, the re- or song they recorded that's going to be in the movie. And it's, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It sounds beautiful. Um, and so then, yeah, they said that, which, I mean, I had already read that Lee Bryce is going to be in it and Priscilla Presley is going to be in it, but they did say that. And there seemed to be a lot of people who didn't know that and they were like excited, which, I mean, that's going to be great, um, having both of them in it. But, um, and then they let you, um, they did like questions, you know, like you could send in questions before the event. They were like, if you want to send in a question, you know, email us and tell us who it's for and then what the question is. 
That sounds cool. That'll be cool to have him in a, in a Hallmark movie and them doing a song. And isn't, wasn't there something about Wes also singing? Yes, Wes is also going to be singing. And I did see it. They just showed Kelly and Lee more, but they did show a clip of Wes, like a small clip of him uh, in the studio. I could see him when they were doing like a montage. Um, and so he was in there too, uh, recording also. That's cool. That'll be fun. Yeah. I was not just some little tiny bit of them. I hope it's like a, a good song. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they tease that kind of stuff. And then like when they did a song for Christmas and... <laughs> And you think that they've got Becca Tobin from Glee in there, and you think that they'd have her, like, she's supposed to be playing a country music singer. You think they'd have more than, like, I swear it was 30 seconds, maybe, of singing. I'm like, what? That, that's true. That's really true. They really didn't have her sing, like, barely at all. Yeah. It was so disappointing. <laughs> I was like, I kind of wondered if it was if they were doing that because maybe she's not a country music singer, and so then they didn't want to expose that, but, but, if that's the case, just don't make her a country music singer. Just make her a pop star. Who cares? Like, yeah, what? A singer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that was so, I was so annoyed by that. But so hopefully they'll give us like a real song. That would be really cool. They actually did a pretty good job in Christmas at Graceland. The only funny thing about it is they sang Silent Night like nine times. <laughs> it's like, what? Is this the only carol? That you know? It's a lot of carols. <laughs> yeah. None of them have, like most of them have expired copyrights. So I think you can, you know, just sing one of the other old carols, Joy to the World or something like that. I don't know. That was really funny to me. I'm like, they're singing Selenite again. <laughs> so you know, obviously it's a, there's a wedding, but they give you any other ideas about kind of what the story's going to be? Um, they kind of, it kind of seems like the, the kind of big thing, which... I hate to say it's not my favorite thing. Hopefully they don't play it up so much like they did in uh, the Darcy wedding uh, movie. Um, but it's gonna, oh. uh, I, 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 I did not like that movie. I was like, <laughs> it was too much for me with her being with being having that attitude kind of thing. But um, their yeah. families are going to be um, like their their families are very different. So I don't know if one's like more uppity and rich, and the other one's kind of more down to earth. But it seems like there's going to be a real kind of t pulling of both sides of, oh, we want it this way. Oh, we always envisioned it this way. So that's, it can be good, but sometimes they play it too much and then it kind of takes over the whole movie. And so, um, so yeah, we'll see. Play with that. Yeah. I'm with you on the Darcy. In general, the bre the wedding movies are my least favorite. I just, just, I hate the Bridezilla trope so much. I just think you're so lucky. If you found somebody who wants to marry you and that loves you, stop it. Just stop it. Like, <laughs> exactly. No, really. I mean, I think I like the falling in love movies more because there's usually not as big of a conflict that happens in those. Usually in the wedding movies, it's always like some conflict that's like way bigger than in the other movies, in, in my opinion. Um, yeah. 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 I I did like Love at First Dance last year. That was my one of my favorites of the year. And uh, that was in, in June weddings, but it was like not really a wedding movie. <laughs> Yeah, but that it was just kind of forced in there. But I thought that one was really good. I did not like Yes, I Do. I was in the minority. A lot of people really loved that, but I, like I was not a big fan. I just felt like they had no trust. I didn't think they were in love at all. And I felt like it was more of a bet. Like, I dare you. I dare you to show up at the, anyway, like, yeah. what? What is this? <laughs> it wasn't for me. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, June weddings as a podcaster, I'm always just, and then you have the bonkers. We'll talk about wedding march, <laughs> the bonkers of wedding march movies, and, uh, and so it's just, it's just a it's just a interesting season uh, for uh, and yeah, I agree with you about the marrying Mr. Darcy because like her having that that tantrum, like I wasn't, it didn't mind it too much. It was just kind of a generic planning a wedding movie and then this tantrum i was just like what is happening here like are you crazy you're just about to marry ryan baby like what i really be happy but i am very excited for the uh friend from friend to fiance this upcoming weekend it looks so good to me oh it looks so cute yeah like i feel like that's the one that they should be saying <laughs> the movie event of the year yeah. <laughs> It looks so good to me. I just, I'm really looking forward to it. 
do you have a favorite so far this year of the Hallmark movies? Um, I would say I really liked the Paris Wine and Romance and the uh-huh. Those were the two I really, really liked. Yeah. Those were pretty good. Those two were really good too. Yeah, yeah, those were good. Uh, my favorite is still One Winter Proposal. I thought that was oh, uh, that one was really so good. good. The proposal was amazing. Oh, that was amazing. I was like tearing up, and I don't know always feel <laughs> when I watch Hallmark movies, but I was like, this is like stunning. Like I can feel my heart, like just like yeah. like I'm like I'm so you know into it. And so, yeah, yeah, it was so good. So and everything in that moment was like perfect. Yeah. So did Kelly Pickler, did she play for you guys? Or I guess it just showed the clips of her playing or? It just showed the clips from the movie of the, like them recording. Unfortunately, she didn't do anything live. That would have been amazing. Yeah. To mind, but... <laughs> yeah, I wish she would have. That would have been cool. Like at the wedding reception, if they would have let her do a song. Yeah, that would have been really cool. So she said something in there about how, uh, as she talked about uh, in the clips that you shared, about Hallmark being uh, positive and uplifting, and you want to expand kind of on what she was talking about there? Yeah, she um, she was kind of saying like uh, you know why she loves to you know why she likes working with Hallmark because it really is uh, a safe place and a uplifting place where people can go and because life in this world can just be so depressing and hard and she's glad that it's a place where people can, you know, watch something uplifting and kind of escape that for a while. And that can kind of be a therapy therapy for people um, Mm -hmm. to an extent. And so she really just, that's one of the reasons she really likes to work with them. That's cool. So then they had this party. This looked like quite the Hallmark party. (laughs) It was on the happily ever after dinner dance party, correct? So what did you guys have to eat? Um, they had Caesar salad, um, green beans, roasted potatoes, uh, carrots, rolls, and then they had choice two choices of meat. It was a chicken breast or a uh, roast beef. Okay. That's, that's a respectable Hallmark dinner. <laughs> what I would think of as like the ultimate Hallmark dinner. I don't know. <laughs> but it was good. Yeah. Very good. And so then they had a DJ there or a band or what did they? Yeah, they had a DJ for, um, I guess, like the first like two hours or hour and a half, I think. Uh, they had a DJ. And before uh, you went, they did also, when you could ask questions, they had, you could send in song requests. Um, and so I did hear like three of the songs that I wanted. I heard them all. So that was nice. Ooh, what, what songs did you request? I requested... Um, Treasure by Bruno Mars, and I Want It That Way, The Backstreet Boys. Uh, I Feel Like a Woman, Shania Twain. Three different <laughs> song choices. <laughs> it's good. They play good songs. I was kind of worried. Like, I was like, okay, this is homework. Like, I don't know what to expect for, like, a DJ, um, you know, experience. Um, yeah. The songs that they played, so I was pleasantly surprised with that. That's good. It wasn't all just, like, faux rock. <laughs> Like some of these movies. Yeah, that's what I would thought it, but I was not sure. So yeah, they played like just regular music you hear on the radio and some that you don't, but yeah. It's kind of interesting. I wonder, I mean, maybe they won't because it doesn't sound like the attendance was super great, but I wonder if they'll try this again closer to Christmas. I mean, I think they would get way more attendance. I was thinking that when I was there, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I was like, a Christmas thing would be like, even more awesome just because yeah like if they did it in a place like denver or something like that that would make a ton of sense oh yeah yeah you could have it in denver because that's like a hub so it's easier for people to get to fly to it's right in the middle of the country so it's not too bad that's what that's what i would do hallmark if you need any help planning let us know (laughs) we can be the official the semi-official podcast we can work with the bubbly sesh it'll be great (laughs) <laughs> so uh so yeah and they look like they had kind of little stations photo ops instagram kind of things stuff yeah, like that yeah, the slow-mo station which was obviously really popular because it looks really cool and uh then they had like a, um i didn't get to do it actually uh the kind of like the instagram thing you hold up and put your face yeah in. they had that one and then they had like a ro- like a light pink like rose wall and then there was one more, something that said, like, June weddings on it. 
um, I think. So yeah, they had several photo places. For you. So did Jack Wagner, he pl- did he play at the party, his yeah. band? Party, okay. yeah. During the DJ session at the end, they cut the cake and then Jack went up and then he played until the end of the party, like the last okay. 45 minutes. Uh, he was yeah. like, he was rocking it out. Yeah, he really was. I was, I was surprised. <laughs> I mean, because I don't really know anything. That much yeah. Playing music. And so my mom did because she watched in her hospital. But I was like, wow, he's like jamming. Like, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very good. I actually made like the, I don't know, the over 50 crowd was super digging it. <laughs> oh, they were. They were. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And they had, uh, who all was there at the party? Were there any, the, the stars were there? Jill Wagner, was she there? Yeah, Jill. Jill yeah, she was Jill, there. yeah. Jill was there. And um, then everyone from the wedding at Graceland, uh, Wes and uh, Tamara and Ryan and Claire. And I don't remember that older guy's name. <laughs> <laughs> he talked to us. He was so nice. Um, all of them. And then Jill. Yeah. So they were- yeah. That's cool. We kind of have a joke in the podcast that Jill is my cousin because my last name is Wagner. Oh, uh, yeah. That's so right. when I was interviewing her, I was like, oh, or we can be cousins. She was like, yeah, that would be great. I know my mom asked me, she's like, is she related to Jack? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's name is Wagner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we really have a lot of cousins at Hallmark because there's Joe Wagner, there's Jack Wagner, and there's Lindsay Wagner, who's been a couple too. I was like, great. <laughs> But anyway, so, and then there was like a cake of some kind? Yeah, there was a wedding cake. And so they, uh, they kind of stopped the music or the DJ kind of stopped. And then they had um, all the stars come up to do the cake cutting. And so it was really funny though, because it's like, you can tell the actors and they need direction and like working off a script because they all just go up there. And then everyone's like, okay, so who's cutting this cake? And they're all just standing there. And then Claire, the little girl, she's like, all right, I'm going to tell jokes because, like, nobody's, like, doing anything. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh, what's happening? He's like, we don't usually do this in the Hallmark movies. We don't actually cut the cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they, they finally got the knife, and then Kelly helped Claire cut the, cut the cake. Um, but then they brought cake out from the back. So I don't know. It seemed like it was kind of more, like, a, for show cutting cut cake. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes they'll make them out of styrofoam and then have just one slice. And that's and- what she was like she was she's so funny with her accent she was like is this real because she, she ate some so maybe it was like you said like one piece because she did when she helped her cut it she did eat a piece um but yeah i guess maybe maybe the rest of it really wasn't real yeah i've yeah. heard of the i've heard of people doing that before uh, but that's funny and, and even at weddings listeners they do that and i think it's so weird yeah. they'll have them take just a uh the, the, then they'll bring out sheet cakes i'm like what <laughs> It's so weird to me. I I don't understand. I don't understand a lot about weddings. I think there's a lot of weird stuff going on. But I, but yeah. So that sounds like a pretty fun night. It was very very fun. I I wasn't really sure. Like when it said, you know, your favorite Hallmark stars will be in attendance. I really didn't know what to expect. I thought they might like be in some roped off place where like I couldn't like talk to them and stuff. But they were totally just milling around and talking to everybody and taking pictures with people and just so nice. Just everyone was so nice. I just couldn't believe it. It was great. That is really cool. Uh, so the next morning you had the wedding March five panel and I am very curious about this because I don't know. I, what is your feeling about the wedding March movies? Oh dear, you're going to catch me in one of the only things on Hallmark. I have not really watched them. (laughs) I don't know. This is, uh, okay, I don't know if I should say this. Well, no. I I have not seen, and it's going to become obvious why, but I have not seen the first three wedding movies, but you know, Andrew was in the first, the fourth wedding movie, so I did see that one. So I said, now I watched their panel. I said, okay, my mom said, my mom and I said, okay, we're going to go watch, you know, the first three movies now. So we are going to watch the first three, but we have both really seen the fourth because Andrew was in it. So, um, so yeah, I don't, I haven't seen all of them. So. <laughs> well, they're, they're so nutty. They're the r- most ridiculous movies I've ever seen in my life. And in, uh, but uh, I don't want to spoil it because the, so you did watch the fourth movie then. Yeah right like that promise ring was the most insane thing like 
like we on the podcast, we were just like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that he's like 50 years old. Like, exactly, yeah. even if he's 40, like he's, you don't get promised rings when you're wait, like, wait. an adult. What? <laughs> And it's so weird because they haven't actually hardly even defined their relationship at all as like boyfriend and girlfriend in the, in like the second movie, she moves up there after they have like the first movie is fine. It's perfectly fine. Uh, the second movie, she moves up there, but she's like, Oh, we're not dating. Cause you don't want to mix business with pleasure or whatever. And I'm like, why did you move up there? You gave up your whole career, your whole li- like life to move up to, to be closer to this person, but yeah, you're not going to date this person. And it's, and then it just got progressively more ridiculous how they were stretching out, not wanting these two people to get married. And you're supposed to believe that this is like Hallmark chastity, that they're not in any kind of like relationship, you know? And they're just like, what is yeah. going on? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the clip. They kind of give away, I guess, what's going to happen at the end of this movie. Uh huh. Seems to be some kind of actual proposal from what I gather. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, he, Jack was like, Yeah, everyone's like, when are these two people going to like actually like get married and like what's wrong with you people and stuff? But I'm like, Yeah, I mean, it's been, you know, this is going to be five movies and like <laughs> that's crazy. Like, yeah, you should be well, like, already married. <laughs> well, it's so weird too because if they run a wedding, venue then they can just have them plan other people's weddings like it's not hard yeah, exactly like what <laughs> it was so much build up i really don't know it was so funny i but i'm oddly enough i'm excited about the wedding march five because i just want to see what ridiculous like, what <laughs> i want to see the post promise ring fall out <laughs> Because I'm telling I'm almost 40. And if some guy gave me a promise ring at this point, like, <laughs> I, I would riot. It's like, time to fully commit. Yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> like, I would rather somebody just keep dating me than, like, give me a promise ring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would just so mad. Yeah, I just enjoy it. It was crazy. So, anyway, so, yeah, so this panel... <laughs> it was different. It was, only two, it was only two of them. Yeah. So that was different. Um, and so they kind of, they talked about the movie and they did show us three clips from the movie. Uh huh. And they talked about the movie, but then they also talked about, you know, how long they known each other. Cause I guess he was, I didn't know he was, did Melrose Place some also. And like when they first, when he first contacted her about doing the whole series of movies, he talked about that. And like when they first met for the first time after like, you know, 25 years when they started doing this, And just like how much they really, really love working together. And you can tell by the way they interact and the way they were talking that they just, they're really genuine, really good friends. And they really enjoy doing these movies together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited to see Tyler Hines in this latest one because I loved him. He's been so good. So funny. And Cindy Busby, I think will be fun. Yeah, she'll be good too. Yeah, they they showed them kind of an interaction between them, uh, Cindy Busby and... uh, Tyler and then the other two cups were more like with Mick and Olivia uh, at the characters, Jack and Josie. Um, mm, that is funny. That's really good. Well, we have so much to look forward to when it comes to winning March 5. Were they kind of, did they kind of sort of get the kind of joke of it all? You could tell, at least from the clip it looked like that I that you sent. It's like, I, I felt like they kind of had a sense of humor about it. Yeah, they did. They were like, well, because somebody asked them like, is there going to be another movie? And so Josie's like, well, basically, by the, when you see the end, you know there has to be another movie. So I'm like, okay, and then <laughs> have to, like propose at the end of this movie, and then maybe the sixth movie they finally they're like, yeah, we have to have a sixth movie. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> they have to be getting married. So <laughs> I mean, I think the end goal should be that we have to have as many wedding march movies as there are Star Wars movies. That that's that's the, the end goal. I think. <laughs> You know, stretching it up. <laughs> That's funny. Well, and uh, so yeah, did you get to have any uh, barbecue while you were there down in Memphis? My my parents' friends they took us to I think it was called the Barbecue Shop. It's been there for like thirty years. Yeah, but it was it was good. Yeah. That's fun. Well, it sounds like a really great trip. It sounds like a fun event. And 
you were so nice to, especially the last minute, <laughs> to agree to share your experience with all of us. I know we really, everybody in the podcast community really enjoyed your updates. That was really sweet of you. And uh, so thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. No problem. It was really fun. Yeah. So we'll definitely have to have you on again. And uh, I'm glad to have you part of the podcasting family. <laughs> and uh, so it, if uh, people want to follow you online, on Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff, like how can people follow you? My Instagram is awscott21. And my Twitter is jesusgirl21. That's great. Make sure you guys are following the podcast at Hallmarkies Podcast all over social media and on iTunes and YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, if you can give us a uh, rating and review, we really appreciate it. And if you're listening on YouTube, you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that as well. We also have our Patreon that we have just set up uh, the, in the last month, and we've had a really fun response. We're really grateful, and you can get some exclusive early content and get to communicate with us and give us ideas, and we, get to, we have our Facebook group that is really fun for patrons. We can talk about whether you like it, not like it, open to all opinions, so it's really good, and you can become a patron for as low as $2 a month, so it's a really pretty good deal, so check that out. I'll have a link in the description and you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews all over social media on Raw Tomatoes and on iTunes and YouTube. So check that out as well. So thanks so much. And this was really fun. I had a great time talking about this. Me too. It was great. Well, we'll definitely have to have you on again soon. And yeah, let us know if you guys got to go uh, to this event. Uh, let us know what your experience was and uh, what you think about the different things, Wedding Graceland and the Wedding March movies. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section or on Twitter. That'd be great. And thanks again. And we'll talk again soon. Bye.